I'll try to make a quick video for you guys because this I think is pretty interesting. So this is my 1991 Craftsman LT4000. I actually fixed this up and restored it in the early fall of last year. I made a long YouTube video on it that's done very well. I think it's over 71,000 views at this point. So anyhow, this thing sat in storage until now, which is June 20th. <laughs> and uh, obviously I had some problems. Uh, some mice had gotten into some things. We had some issues. But I finally got it running again, and then it started leaking oil. So I figured, hey, let's do this right. Let's see if it's a head gasket issue, because it really kind of looked like it was. So this is an interesting engine. This is a Tecumseh, and let me just explain a little bit before I get into the head gasket. So here's the engine cover. It's upside down. It's not upside down for the for the numbers on the engine, but so it says Craftsman. Of course, it's not a Craftsman engine. It's sold on a Craftsman product. 12 and a half horsepower, overhead valve gold. This is the Tecumseh. It took me a while to find the numbers for the engine, but there's your model, and then you get a serial number, uh, and I'll show you what those are. If you can see this, so there are parts, like Partstree has it. So the numbers are 143416082. That will get you this 1991 Tecumseh engine. And this is the head gasket part. So the head gasket for this is 35854. I'll get you the head gasket. So that was, okay, you have to believe like that was hard enough as it was to uh, locate those parts. The other challenge with these particular overhead valve Tecumsehs, these little ones, very difficult to uh, take the head off. So <laughs> the valves really get in the way and I had to create a tool. So this is what I created. I had this bit of whatever it was and I cut this notch out so that you could actually all well, my parts are everywhere but so you can actually get to the the valves you have to take the valves off to get the head off okay um, and so you have to go that far and I guess Tecumseh might make a tool but I made one I sharpened it basically so I could really squeeze these in between the springs and and the uh, like the top of the valve the cap or, or the keepers that are in there and you have to push down the springs and then you could get the keepers out so I will try to show you that as I reinstall the head so that's part of the reason why I'm making this video so here's the old head gasket it's not too bad but it's damaged there oh where does, let's see orientation here so yeah, it's damaged at the top, which I don't know, you know, if that would cause the leaking. So I'm hoping this is it. I mean, obviously it could have just been like loose head bolts and things like that, but since we're in here, right? Um, and we're just gonna hope that it solves it. So there's the new one, part looks correct. So let's try to get this installed. It's kind of a mess to demonstrate guys, but I'm gonna do my very best to show it to you. So here's the head. Here's the valve cover, housing, whatever you want to call it. It kind of goes together like this. Okay, so that all goes together. Okay, then this goes in here like this. Obviously, I have to put the head gasket on. I'm just mocking this up for you guys just to show you. This sort of fits in there like that. That should fit in a little better. But anyway, for now, that's good. All right, so out of all the bolts, the head bolts that I have, there's two that are shorter. And I figured out where those go. They go on the very outside bolt holes. And all the other ones are long. Like you're going to have these that are long. <clears throat> and then these other ones are going to be long ones. I'm going to need to uh, find my other ones, but there's two more, I think. And then you got these shorties and those go on the outside. So that's sort of the plan. Let's see if we can make all that happen. Get all those parts and pieces come off. <laughs> all right. 
just a mock installation there for you. All right, let's see if we can do this for real. I don't know if you could tell, but I got the head gasket on. We're gonna slip the, I know I got the muffler attached too, but it just seemed easier. And I have the two little head bolts that I'm just gonna hand tighten in there. And these you cannot get to unless you take that whole valve cover housing off. And to do that, you have to take the springs off the valves and the keepers and all that sort of stuff, the rockers. The rockers are easy, it's the spring. Even if you wanted to tighten these bolts, especially this one, you can't get to unless you take all of that, everything that I've done, <laughs> unless you take all that off. Okay, so short one, short one, the other four are longer. And we're going to have to get these all tightened down before we do that valve cover housing. Okay. And then we can put this on. And one of the push rods, the one in the bottom, has to... Here, let me set you up better. This is what's also kind of tricky. This one has to go in first. The other one you could put in later, you can see there's, like this one doesn't come out. The other one you can put in. And then you do it like that, install it that way. Wow, I'm trying to keep all these parts and pieces in alignment. Kind of tricky, but I figure it's worth documenting because I don't, I couldn't find any videos on this. I don't know if anybody takes these things apart. <laughs> They're just, not that easy okay head gasket installed head tightened down looking online the specs say 16 and a half foot pounds 200 inch pounds for the head bolt torque all right let's get the valve cover housing on now all right main thing is trying to get these yeah all that likes to fall off it's okay we'll pick that up later and this should fit in very snug if we can get it right yes that's right made a nice satisfying little click pop sound clean up our little part that fell on the ground here it's like the seal slash cup washer before the rings go uh, sorry before the springs go on all right let's get our other push rod and make sure these are moving up and down so a little screw what do i have a quarter inch so that just kind of holds the whole thing on there keeps that in place before i get um, these these are actually I was thinking they were the head bolts. I mean they are head bolts, but they come You know with the rockers So that's where the, the rocker bolts go So it's the heads up on that got the spark plug in too. I don't know if you can see it on that side All right, well, what were we doing here? See this one it's got the flare, but since this opening is large I can actually fit it in so now I just wanted to see if uh, things move here. All right, there's one. So I might have been getting ahead of myself a little bit. Again, not an expert. But I think having the push rod guides in will probably help me out. But uh, I did get these set. That you, you just have to fiddle with them. You kind of have to angle it more up than you thought. And then it goes in. All right, so... These posts are going to go in. So we'll get those tightened down. And then on top of them go uh, the rockers. All right, we're about to get ready to get into the tricky stuff. But the posts are bolted down tight. Okay, the springs go in. They look like this where there's like more stacked up on the bottom. They go in like that.
then there's going to be this part. And this is where you're going to need that tool because you have to really, what you have to do, <laughs> this is what I learned. So what you have to do with the tool is you have to get it in between this part and the spring. Like wedge it in there like that. And then you can, with vice grips, like secure it. That now, what you, you can also pull these out. Those come out a little bit. And that's going to help you out big time. Okay. So this tool will get in there. You can see it has to be like the, the right width. Like that. <laughs> Hopefully you can see that. If you have something that's too wide, it's going to skip. But that's the width you're looking for. So you can easily make something like this. Not too hard. Just a little cut off wheel and keep slicing away until you get the right size. And then I ground it down so it's actually kind of sharp. It was like a knife. So you can really slide it in there when there's a lot of tension with the spring. So I'll try to install it for you, see if I can capture it on video. I'm going to try it a little differently than the way I uninstalled them, but let's see if this works. It seems virtually impossible. <laughs> this really might be a two-man job. Well, it might be a two-man job or I can just make my tool a little better. Check that out. <laughs> so I made two holes, one for the post and one for the push rod. I mean, I could just take out the push rod, but this one can't come out without taking the whole valve cover assembly off. So I'm doing it like this, guys. So let's try this, let's see. Okay, hopefully you can see here. Let me get my little magnet. There we go. One. Can we do it, guys? I think we got it. Hopefully my head wasn't in the way. One done. All right, well, let's see if we can get the other one. Oh, no way. I put the spring in upside down. I put the spring in upside down. I don't know if that matters, but that's gonna bother me. I'm gonna redo it. Well, I might as well film it. Here's how you uh, take the springs off. <laughs> Easy peasy now. All right, spring, you go that way. There we go. Let's try this again. Got one on the bottom. I know it's hard to see. One on the top. Kind of make sure they're in there. They definitely are. There's a groove. They just kind of lock into that groove.
Okay, that's correct. All right, let's see if we can do the other one. Spring going the right way. Should work out. And we're about to put these keepers in. See if we can have success doing it the same way. Start with the bottom. Don't mind my kids drumming in the background. <laughs> They're watching too, just like you. All right, we got it. There we go. So that's how you take on and off the valve springs on an OHV 12 and a half horsepower Tecumseh. There's a great example of the compression release on this valve. I don't have these uh, to spec yet. They're just on loosely, but you can watch this little bump Watch on the next one See that little bump It just does a little release of the compression It's kind of fun to see There it is. Excuse me. I don't know if it does it in reverse. Oh, it does. Yeah Just that little bump 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 bump. It's right there and that just makes it a little easier to start. There you go, guys. I don't do many repair videos or like how-to videos, but I figured the internet needed this one. Considering there was a lack of work done on these type of engines, maybe this will help somebody. All right, guys, my name is Kyle. The channel is called Kyle by the Creek. Hopefully you subscribe and like the video and tune in next time for a longer one.